Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zan Ta of Repro Products. This screencast will showcase how to create a generic model line based family with an array. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zan Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017. I have a generic file family that I created and it's just called a bracket framing. It's nothing more than a couple extrusions. I want to take this family and load it into a generic model face, uh, line based family to array. How do I do this? Big blue R for the application menu. New family. Look for the general portion under here, generic model, and look for line based. We'll click open. And now we'll start with the creation of a new one. We have a reference plane here and here that define the center point, insertion point, if you will, here, and then actual reference line that is hosted by that horizontal reference plane, a length parameter, and then, and then another reference plane that dictates the endpoint of that reference line. You have the ability to move this if you need to and change it so that you can actually change the length parameter. So let's give it, say, a length of 15 for now. I want to take the other family, that bracket, and load it into this particular family, nest it. So you can either do one of two things. You can go over and click Component and load it in. And if you say yes, it's going to force you to ask you where it's at. Since I already have it open, I can just use Control-Tab on my keyboard to toggle back to that family and load it into the project. I'll pick that new family that I'm working with, and then I'll place it in plan view like so. Go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, take that family, create another copy of it, and place it over here. Then use the align command and align to the center of it that vertical reference plane, and from this horizontal reference plane to this edge, line and lock it. You do the same thing for this last one here. For this side. Now, if I were to leave this as such and create a new project and toggle back using Control Tab to that new family and load it into the project, I can specify to place it on the face of an object or on the work plane. If I just do this, all it does is it gives me a line based family with two brackets on either end. It doesn't give me the array on the inside. So, Let's head back to that family. Now let's go ahead and take this particular family that's hosted and array it. We'll start the array command. We'll specify how many we want. Let's say we do four. And we'll specify some arbitrary distance. And that's fine. And the reason is because we're going to array the distance between the brackets and the integer value as well. So when you have the object that is a group within the array selected, you'll have the array number, integer number, you can select it and you can actually label it. So if you click that and you say add parameter, you can give it a parameter. So we're going to say for this, we're going to say it is the uh, number of brackets. And we'll go ahead and use underscore for spacing just to make it easier to read. And I'll make it an instance. <clears throat> and for the purposes of doing formulas and having uh, parameters inside parameters, it's a little easier to set it up as an instance for now. We'll group this under, say, constraints, and we'll hit OK. Now, we need to create a dimension from the center of one bracket to the center of another, and we can parameterize this as well. When you, send, when you parameterize this, this will be the spacing between the brackets. So we'll call it bracket underscore spacing. And again, put it as an instance parameter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go into the family types window. In the family types window, we need to create some default situations and um, maybe another parameter. So for example, I'll create one. We'll call it max bracket. Spacing. 
and we'll specify that as instance as well <clears throat> and put it under constraints. Now let's say I want that maximum spacing to be four, in, uh, say four feet. And now we hit apply, we hit OK. We need to associate the parameters of the spacing between the brackets with the overall length so that it divides equally in between this reference plane and this reference plane. So we'll go back to the family types window and we'll make some adjustments. The bracket spacing is not going to be a static number of three feet. It's actually going to be a formula, which is the length divided by the number of brackets. Now, make sure when you're doing uh, formulas, creating formulas within your parameters, that the naming is exact. In other words, here it says number underscore of underscore brackets, and it's capital B, capital N. It needs to be exactly the same. If not, it's going to tell you you can't do it. So once I've done that, it accepts it and it changes this value. So this formula is now driving this total value. We also need to adjust the number of the brackets now because the number of the brackets is going to change based upon the length, not necessarily a value that we input. So here under number of brackets, we're going to have that set up as the length divided by the maximum bracket spacing. And again, taking a note at the naming convention and you'll see that that information holds as well. We hit apply and we hit OK. Now it automatically adjusts properly. We'll save this file and we'll call it, put it under custom generic model line based one. Now that we have it saved, we can start a new Revit project. Go to architectural, that's fine. Just toggle back to the family with the control tab and then load it into the project. And again, placing on the work plane and I can click and drag and click again and it automatically creates the object as an array with the correct number of spacing. So this is how you create a custom generic model line based family with an array. Thank you very much for watching.